those bright orange shirts again. Well done, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Right, folks, if you were here earlier today, you may have seen the bronze team practicing for their live testing session. Live testing session is now about to take place, so the dogs that you see coming into the ring are going to be tested against the criteria for the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme bronze level. So, without further ado, let's introduce to the ring our bronze team. with Darcy and last but not least we've got Tammy with Bailey and our team uh, leaders have been training them all morning we've got uh, Jane Wood and Lisa Bassett here now these three dogs as I say are just about to be tested so we wish you all the best of luck and of course we cannot examine them without an examiner so our examiner today for this event who's not listening to me yes she is it's Chris Whitehead Right, Chris, we'll leave you to it, but uh, we'll hopefully keep the folks informed about what's going on. I'm joined by my ably, ably knowledgeable colleague, Mr. Dave Currier. So, Dave, I know uh, Chris is starting off here, but what do you reckon they're feeling at the moment? Well, at the moment, I just think they're feeling, oh my God, it's here already. Um, you know, now the judges come in, or the examiners now coming to the ring, so that people can be a little bit... You know, this is a quite a hard situation for these dogs to go under test. Um, you know, we wouldn't normally do it in this sort of environment, and they're brave enough to come along. So I think it's, it just shows you know, that they're confident, and uh, at the end of the day, they're still taking the same dog home, whether they pass or not ready. And I've seen straight away now, where they've been given a spare slip lead to put on, they've had to take the collar and lead off and give it to the examiner, who seems to be looking at it. What's that? What's happening there, Dave? Well, with the collar and lead, what we're looking for is obviously to make sure that the collar and lead is suitable for the dog. And if you notice, the examiner at no point touching these dogs at this level. And while she's got the collar on, checking on the stitching, checking the D clip on the lead, make sure there's no stitching, etc. on the collar, and obviously the ID tag. Because if the ID, ID tag is incorrect, or has the, no details on at all, they're not even eligible to take the test. So it will be, thank you very much, but sorry, you can't take the test. Now I know folks, some folks get really confused over this ID tag. I can't even say it, that's how confused I am. ID tag issue. Um, now, there is the legal perspective and what the law says is what we have to do, but there's also the eligibility perspective, which is slightly different, isn't it? So what, what's the difference between the two? Okay, well, the law of land is the Control of Dogs Order 1992, which states quite clearly that it must have the owner's name and address on there. Now, it's not in any abbreviations. The law says it should be the full name and address of the owner. Now, obviously, under the Good Citizen Dog Schemes, we will accept the owner's name, first line of address, and postcode. Now, people will put phone numbers on, which is a great idea, and it's important, because obviously, you're out looking for your dog, put a mobile number on, they will get them call. Um, but it's not a legal requirement to have the phone number on. Good, it looks like we're moving on now. Let's see, our examiner giving some instructors instructors some instructions about what she wants. This looks like uh, the door and gate exercise. If we're correct there, Dave, what, what are we going to be looking for? Okay, with the gate exercise, door and gate exercise, we're looking for the dog to be under control. But I think they're also going to link in the heel work exercise. This is a, a basic heel work exercise, and then obviously come up to the leading gate, so they've got a combination of those two exercises. But with the gate, what we're actually looking for is the dog to be under control both sides. Now the dog doesn't have to sit, but if they want the dog to sit, that's fine. Um, but we are looking for the dog to be under control. So it could be a sit, stand or down this side, a nice loose lead, under control, going through the gate, then the dog comes through, under control again, 
shutting the gate to make sure that the gate can be closed and the dog is under control. And as you see, clearly under control. Yeah, that poodle looked like it uh, done exactly what you were describing there, Dave. Exactly, I think we're a bit moved over because we might uh, <laughs> get run over by the dogs. But they're doing a little bit of that earwork exercise as well. Well, it looks like it's uh, Rory with Darcy to go next. Fairly loosely, but uh, young Darcy looks interested in everything else that's going on. They're about to approach the gate now. I just put the dog in the sit for this one. Yes, um, look, tomorrow morning, if people are around to come and see the special pre beginners, that is a, a requisite to make the dogs sit. The dogs must sit in special pre beginners. However, with a good dog skin, we're quite okay, or we, we say it's allowable for the dog to be under control. It doesn't specifically say it must be a particular position. Also, I think um, they're trying to guide him exactly where they want, because obviously Chris is also looking to see that he'll work. And as we said earlier on, no treats can be used during the course of the test or a toy. Um, and even after the exercises, unless the judge said it's okay, or should I say the examiner said it's okay to reward the dog, that's fine. But they can protect. So you might see them put their hand in the pocket, get their hand out. But it doesn't mean, or they shouldn't, that they get caught, they will probably be not ready for having food and using the motivation of the food. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I thought that Nicola was giving Harley there some treats, but I think you're quite right, she's just pretending it's a threat of a treat. Exactly, the hand was coming to the dog, the dog looked, but the hand was quite clearly it was open, there wasn't a problem. Okay, looks like we've just been uh, joined by Richard with Dougie, the Labrador. Um, yes. I know he was in the, the training sessions this morning, so uh, last but not least, shall we say. Yes, and um, also when Chris was bringing the dogs in, all the ID tags had actually been checked prior, but because we wanted, we only had the three dogs at the time. We wanted to show people what the judge would actually be looking for, the examiner, sorry, should be looking for. So all the, the discs will be checked. She might want to check it again, but obviously he's just come back in the ring, and if it had fallen off outside, then obviously he wouldn't be ready, because he has, he's got to have a basic disc on the dog at the time of testing. Now you said that he wouldn't be ready, because of course, with the good sense of dog speed, you pass or you're not ready. It's no failure, is it? No, there's no failure. We don't like to say fail. I think it's, it's quite abrupt to say you failed. Um, and we, don't forget the scheme is all about encouragement and responsible dog ownership. So I think some people do turn and say that's if you fail. As far as they're concerned, they can't do any more. It looks like the examiner is insisted on uh, seeing the clumber and lead for Dougie. So uh, just seeing what we saw earlier with the other dogs. Exactly, another slip lead's going on, lead and collar come off, you will check the lead, check the collar, check the ID tag, but they were checked prior. Well, so he's just got his boot bag out as well, it's uh, all good since he's carrying boot bags. Again, part of the uh, actual eligibility, no boot bag, no test. So it's the tag, bag, then you can have the test, but there's no tag, no bag, no test. And that's it. Tag, bag and test, like it. Right, so I think we're going to be uh, moving on. We've done the door and gate. Um, is this uh, walking through dogs as a distraction, I believe? Yes, they bring it, because there's a small group, what, they, what they're going to do, they, they, they've made sure the dogs that are coming are safe and set and safe and sound. They are nice and calm dogs, okay? They won't go up to these dogs, they, if their dogs go up to them, they certainly won't be reactive. Like, for instance, when we're doing the puppies, we make sure that you bring a dog in that's suitable. So you, what they've done now, you can see, I, well, what I can see at the moment, and uh, they're going to have the two dogs in two groups, and then what's going to happen is the hand is going to come around, and I think they're going to do like a figure of eight, so they'll walk amongst other dogs and people. And don't forget, at the end of this exercise, there is also a minute conversation. A minute conversation. Okay, so I see, so we've gone around through the group, but it looks like we've got some dogs from the silver display team and a couple of dogs from the puppy display team. It's quite nice to see. Yes, um, let's say the scheme is, you know, does uh, 
make sure that the everyone is responsible. And even at the puppy level, we know these dogs are very keen. You can see, look at the, the dogs there, they're looking at the, the handler. Um, so this is all about the motivation techniques, especially what they, they started doing this afternoon, or this morning, with the puppies. All right, so it looks like uh, the examiner is holding the one minute conversation with the team leaders joining in. So I think that was a, a, a pass, what looked like a pass to me for the passing through dogs as a distraction because they all seem to do it fairly well, but who am I to say? Exactly. I wouldn't even say yes or no for the simple reason being, at the end of the day, it's a judge. She might have seen something that we didn't, so, you know, we, we can't be subjective in saying that, you know, yes, that's a pass or, you know, it's not, it's not ready. Because at the end of the day, it is the examiner's decision. Well, it looks like she's over there for the minute conversation. I wonder what they talk about when they have their mini conversation. What do you mean? Well, sometimes they just ask what's going on, how they feel it's going so far, and things like that. But also, don't forget, there's a responsibility and care section. Now, with the responsibility and care section, what may happen is that the examiner now might want to ask them, because they have to get the, the six questions, they have to get three correct. But if they answer the three correct straight away, there's no point asking the rest, because it's not a requirement again. So she might ask each of them just a couple of questions now, and then at the end, one more question individual, just so she can sort of bring them in, tell them how things are going, and how the test went for them individually. Right, well it looks like uh, that's over, but I'm just hearing the examiner say grooming and examination. Are we going to have pretty dogs then in the good state? Yeah, well, it's not supposed to bring your dogs, but what, what, it is, what it is about is that when we get the dogs in, um, she may combine the two exercises we will see in a moment, but they make sure they have the grooming in implements that are suitable for the dog. The judge will be looking and we're, we're, saying, we're seeing when one actual dogs are being groomed, what she's had to do before, but it's going down obviously the whole of the dog, everything. And what we're looking for, any mild avoidance. So if the dog just sort of looks and moves and gets a bit fidgety, that's fine as far as the rules are concerned. However, if the dog starts biting down his hand, biting the brush, and having really bad avoidance regarding being brushed, then unfortunately they would be deemed not ready. And why do we insist, uh, as part of, this, of the uh, award, that they have to groom the dog? I mean, apart from the. Uh, the sort of visual look of the dog. What are the other benefits of, of daily grooming and why do we advocate so much? Well, with the grooming, there's several reasons why to groom your dog and do it on a regular basis. One is obviously you're, you will be going over the dog, removing any dead fur. Um, you will stimulate the skin by the brush running over the skin, so it takes out the dead fur and also it will bring the blood up to the, the, out of the exterior of the skin, I'm oh, sorry, the, just below the layer of skin, so it will stimulate more hair growth, so you'll get a much better coat. Um, also, this is a great way, if you've got a dog with any problems as well, bonding wise, brushing your dog is a fantastic way of bonding with your dog. So you'll get the dog pay you much more attention, you'll be more attentive, and that's just by brushing your dog. Well, we've seen lots of uh, nice grooming going on there, and all the dogs seem to be uh, enjoying being groomed. We've now been told to examine the dog, so they've got to examine their own dog. What's happening there, Dave? Yeah, well, with the examination at the bronze level, the examination is done by the handler. As you saw in some demonstrations, um, with the silver and the gold, it's actually done by the examiner. So what they're looking for here, I mean, Chris is telling them what she wants, and what they're doing, they're opening the dog's mouth, they will be checking the teeth. We need to be able to open the dog's mouth. Well, you never know, you want to take something out. You want to, you want to take something out of the mouth, or you want to check to make sure the teeth and gums are in good condition. But what was she looking for when they open the mouth? They don't try and turn the dog inside out. You know when they pull the jaws really far apart? They don't need it. All we're looking for is the, is the mouth to be open and it should be taught in their training sessions and read right from puppy if they had a from puppy of course. And uh, so that's with the teeth and the eyes. You see all the head parts done, they did the teeth. The, the lady at the end there, She's been asked to do the teeth, but she hadn't seen it being done, although she was checking the rest of the dog. She had, she had gone on. 
So what we're looking for is that this dog should be completely examined, um, as if it was a vet check, and also you can find any early indications should there be a problem with lumps and bumps, etc. Now notice all these dogs were in different positions when they were examined. This one on its back, this one was in a sit, one in a stand. Is there a position they have to be in? No, as long as they can show that they can actually examine the dog, which is the main thing. I mean, at some point, if they're in the sit, they will need to stand up, because obviously the tail needs to be checked. Also, the back legs, if they're sitting, they can't really check the back legs and paws. So at some point, they would need to stand, or at least roll over on their side or on their back, to allow the hand and have, have access to the um, paws, etc. I can see the spare lead going on there, so I think I know what's happening. This was like the return to handler exercise. So what will the judge be looking for here, Dave? Okay, the judge would have set the point, which is going to be 10 paces away, and it's the judge's 10 paces. And what they're looking for is that the handler would put the spare lead under the collar, hand it to the assistant, then the judge would be will tell the handler to move away from the dog for the, for the 10 paces, which have already been measured. And then when called, the dog must come to the handler and to the front. It doesn't have to go into a sit position. As long as the dog comes close enough to the handler, for the handler put a hand into the collar and then be able to put the lead back onto the dog. Just like that there, you saw the dog coming nice and close. She's looking at this so much first, she's looking for the D-ring for the, for the lead. Lead goes on and that will be the end of the exercise. So the dog doesn't have to sit and present itself like an obedience? Not at all. Not at any levels do they have to um, do the, the full finish. We are looking for the dog to come to the front of the handler. You will see a lot of people that do obedience will get their dogs to sit. That's fine. But it's not a requirement. If the dog gets up and runs off, that can cost him a pass on already. So we, we have our uh, young Darcy. We're about to give him a recall. He seems pleased to get back to the head, doesn't he? Very, very pleased. I mean, it's a very enthused act young dog. I mean, I don't think they've had this dog particularly long. Um, I was speaking to Rory early on, and I can't remember. I think he said they only had it in a short time, this dog, and it had been abused. So it is a rescue as far as the, the dog's concerned. And he's taken an awful lot of hard work to get this dog to be able to be touched, because he'd been kicked, well, we think he'd been kicked, in the back end. Um, so he was very, very touchy about being touched on the back end. They've got an awful lot of work into this dog just to build his confidence up. Not even really training it, but even just to build his confidence up. You can see the dog's ready here. Being called. And you notice they're all different paces away. It doesn't matter if the dog whizzes or a bit, because some dogs don't whiz. They, they plod, and they, you know, as long as it comes to the owner, that's all that's required. Well, they all look like they've done that very well, so uh, I know we can't call it, but it looked good to me. Yes, um, the stay's going to be in a minute. Okay, doing well so far. What's the next exercise? It could be the stay, Dave. Should we move back a bit? Yes, we're going to move right out the way, and also, while the stays are going on, we're going to ask people not to rattle the fence, open the sweets and things like that if they can. Because obviously we, we, in this environment, we, you know, there's a lot of pressure on these dogs to start with without encouraging them forward. Now, once they get their dogs settled, we will also stop the commentary um, so we can give the dogs the best chance possible. Because speaking and coming over, over the um, speakers can actually really upset these dogs. So once they're ready, they're doing this stage, we will cease the commentary. I have to say that, you know, you're right, there, there's lots of noise from the speakers. Every time we speak, there's possibly a distraction for them. These dogs are doing remarkably well and very brave to come out here and be tested in front of a large audience. They're very much so. And also, the, the, the pitch, although the level that we can hear, uh, the, with the speakers, etc., that could be a completely different type of pitch for the dogs to hear, and it could actually really upset them. Now, what's going to happen, again, Chris would have set this up so she's got her five paces away. It's a lead on exercise, so they don't take the leads off, and it can be in any position. What 
what will happen is that they will drop the leaves when asked to do so, they will leave their dogs, and the exercise will finish when the hand is given back to the dogs to pick up their leaves. I think we might have preempted the uh, study actually. It looks like this might be responsibility and care questions that she's asking. Um, I know we don't want to repeat the questions that she might ask because we might give somebody an unfair advantage, but what sort of topics do those sort of questions cover? Very basic topics. Um, it's about responsibility and care, um, the doctor's requirements, what it needs to be able to be a doctor. Um, I can't actually mention it. Simple questions will be asked. It's all on section one of the responsibility of the sheet, which if anyone has the information, will be bound to the front of the state. So really then, it's just all the information that a responsible dog owner would have anyway? Yes, very much so. We're not looking at the technical terms and names of different diseases. Well, she asked the question that I asked of you, though. When we're checking the dog over, what are we looking for? Oh, and you gave the answer as well. Was he listening? I probably not. I think he's listening totally to Chris at the moment. I think he's terribly um, a bit nervous, shall we say. Just a teeny bit of the TV that said he's absolutely, he said he's done all these big things in business with, uh, you know, uh, giving seminars, etc., to GEOs and big companies. And this is simply said that the most nerve-wracking experience he's had in his life. Really? Well, I finished the questions and answers there, and our judge walked away smiling, so um, either he got them all right, or the uh, judge has got date tonight. <laughs> well, I'm not even going to comment on that. Um, as I say, we'll move out of the way, because uh, we, we know this dog is a little bit... Uh, this is that time. Yeah. But very quickly, Dave, what, what are they going to do? I say that, as I said, the stay. Is it the stay now? Yeah, we're going to do the stay. So what they're going to do, they're going to leave their dogs. And... Right. Okay. So I've been asked to just give the commands to the dogs then. So I'm standing with the judge. He's moving away. Are you going to stay here or there? So, handlers, are you ready? If you acknowledge the you've heard, are you all ready? Place your leads on the ground. Command your dogs. And leave your dogs. So is that a move? No, that's fine. 
you know, casual movement, rolling over the side, maybe rolling down there, you know, right over when they've been set up in that, like a sink, you see the Aussie down there, the sink quite uh, laying down, sorry, quite upright. You see the lamb laying over the hips, it's just shuffled down then as we spoke, in fact. But if he turned around and rolled over on his other side, again, that would be fine. So, you can see, we've got, we've got a lot of smiles got in, and they've got results yet, so... Uh, no, it could be wind. Right, but the, uh, the, the... I think uh, that the judge, or the examiner, Chris Whitehead, has obviously made her decision since she's off filling out paperwork and what have you, so we're just about to get the result now, and I'm going to leave you with Dave to deliver that result to you. Okay, Mark, so here we go then. The results are going to be um, given. But to hand out the certificates, or hopefully the certificates, we're going to get the education manager, the Kennel Club education manager, the good citizen Dogsy, Heidi Lawrence, in to present the certificates and rosettes. So let's hope. Fingers crossed still, aren't we? Okay, I'll just stand the other side. Here we go then. So I'm sure you're all really give a nice hand of applause for each one of these handers that come out. And the first pass goes to Darcy and Rory. And we have another pass going to Bailey and Charmaine. Going to Harley and Nicola. Even the dogs joining in. Oh, that's it, sorry. Oh, no, sorry, no, no, it's no one. Okay, and of course, we have another pass going to Dougie and Richard. We saw some nice smiling people in all these. All these hands are smiling, the dogs look happy, don't they? They're, they're happy, happy dogs. Happy dogs. Okay, so thank you very much. So we'll give one last round of applause then to all our handlers. Of course, our judge, Chris, and our, and our assistants or team leaders, Lisa Bassett and Jane Wood. Thank you very much, and well done again to our, our four... Uh, participants in the live testing session. It's so very, very brave to actually come out uh, for your entertainment and to be uh, tested and judged in front of you. So give them a round of applause, give them a wave. They all look really, really happy and so they should be thoroughly deserved uh, for very good citizen dogs and handlers leaving the ring. Now ladies and gentlemen, girls